Today we're going to take a look at how to season and look after your cast iron cookware. Hi everyone, this is James from Barbecue.com and welcome back to yet another episode of Barbecue Know How. In this episode we're going to take a look at how to look after cast iron. It can be a little bit trickier than some other materials but it's definitely worth it whenever it comes to actually cooking on it. Cast iron has the ability to get screaming hot which makes it great for searing stuff but it's also good for low and slow cooking as it retains the heat really well. So whenever you get any new piece of cast iron cookware um, chances are it's probably going to come pre-seasoned. Uh, so what does that pre-seasoning mean? Cast iron in its raw form uh, has no protection on it whatsoever and uh, it is then susceptible to rust uh, if it gets damp or any kind of moisture in it and that can lead to a lot of problems. There's very few companies out there nowadays that actually ship raw cast iron. Nearly everything will be pre-seasoned um, but there are different levels of pre-seasoning. So I have a new cast iron skillet here, it's a little 20 centimeter one uh, from Petromax. Uh, these come pre-seasoned, uh, it gives you a little leaflet in the box that tells you it's already been pre-seasoned and it's ready to cook on. Um, so pre-seasoning basically means they apply the oils to it and bake it into the cast iron. Cast iron in this price range, um, the pre-seasoning generally isn't done by hand, uh, it's usually sprayed onto them and then baked. So it tends to give you a slightly textured surface on it where some of the really expensive cast iron or cast iron that is years old has that real sort of black glass shiny finish to it. Pre-seasoning over time uh, will build up that nice black glassy finish. Uh, the more you use it the better it will get. But straight out of the box they tend to have that sort of slightly textured surface. So by all means, uh, take it straight out of the box, give it a wash and throw it onto the barbecue and cook with it. Uh, it should be fine. Uh, but while they're in their new state, I like to get a few layers of extra seasoning on there just before I go ahead and dirty it. So my pre-seasoning process is pretty standard. Uh, you'll take your cast iron straight out of the box and the first thing you want to do is give it a clean. Uh, to do this, I just use screaming hot water and a stiff brush. You shouldn't put any soap anywhere near your cast iron. Uh, so get it under a really hot tap, uh, give it a scrub with a brush and then dry it off just with a normal uh, dishcloth. At that point you want to put it onto a hot hob uh, and get it really hot. That will take any moisture that has seeped into that cast iron and get rid of it so you know that it is completely dry before you start seasoning. So after it's been drying on the hob for 5 or 10 minutes, uh, lift it off and allow it to cool slightly. Uh, it should still be warm whenever you apply the oil but it shouldn't be warm enough that the oil starts smoking. So after a few minutes, uh, add a little drop of oil into the pan. Usually I'm talking about somewhere around uh, the size of a 50p coin uh, in the center of the pan and then use a lint-free cloth. So don't use kitchen paper or don't use any old rag you have lying about because it will leave little fluffy um, lint inside the cast iron and that will get baked into the seasoning. So use something like a microfiber cloth and spread the oil around the entire skillet. So that includes inside, uh, on the outside as well, up the handle, uh, get it all over and just make sure it isn't sitting thick in any places. You want a nice fine layer, uh, you shouldn't have too much on it. After I've spread the oil out then I'll flip the microfiber cloth over to a dry side and give it another wipe over just to take any excess off. As far as oil choice goes, um, you can use uh, good quality olive oil, uh, you can use something like flaxseed oil or uh, something like rapeseed oil. So rapeseed oil wouldn't be the best quality but it tends to be what I would use for the first few seasons. Most cast iron manufacturers will also do like a care conditioner uh, which is just a blend of different oils and it's more of a, a waxy texture than a runny oil. Uh, you can use that for seasoning or after each time you cook whenever you want to recondition that skillet. So once it's covered in oil, it is time to then bake that oil into the cast iron. I should say at this point, never apply oil to a cold uh, skillet or piece of cast iron. Uh, cast iron is a porous material, uh, so you need to heat it up to open up them pores and that allows the oil to get into the cast iron. Otherwise it will just sit on the surface and that's how you end up with uh, sticky cast iron after it's cooled down. So now we want to bake that oil into the cast iron and that gives us our seasoning. To do that we put it into the oven or you can do it in a barbecue as well. Uh, I preheat the oven to around 175 C, uh, I think it's about 350 Fahrenheit. Put it in upside down, so you don't want to put it in uh, the right way up. 
because if the oil starts to run it will gather in the edges of the skillet and that's going to give you a sticky mess so place it in upside down and uh, you want to leave it in there for around an hour after that hour is up lift it out and place it onto a wire rack and I like to allow it to cool completely you can allow it to cool down a little bit to the point where you can add more oil and put it straight into the oven but I like to let it cool completely because if I've used too much oil and it hasn't uh, absorbed into that cast iron properly at that point I'll know if it's uh, tacky once it's cooled completely that I need to readjust and start again so I'll repeat that process twice uh, covering the entire skillet handle and everything uh, and then the third time I will only do the inside so this is where you want to build up most of your seasoning because uh, that's your cooking surface outside yes I will give it uh, a couple of extra coats and over time I'll redo it on the outside but I tend to do the inside uh, every single time I use it so what can go wrong with seasoning the biggest culprit is using too much oil uh, people will cover the entire bottom of the pan in oil and have it sitting thick on it and then put it into the oven and that just bakes into a really thick sticky layer it doesn't absorb in so your cast iron should really only have a slight sheen of oil on it so build up multiple really fine layers rather than trying to do it all at once you might think you're saving yourself time but you're going to end up paying for it in elbow grease trying to scrub that off if you do use a little bit too much oil or you don't heat your cast iron up first before adding the oil and you find you have that sticky texture heat it up on the hob and then stick it under a screaming hot tap now I will say do not put it under a cold tap if you have heated your cast iron up do not put it under a cold tap as it can crack uh, so cold water should never meet hot cast iron so it should always be hot cast iron hot water so the steam should be bellowing out of the tap before you ever put your cast iron anywhere near it so put it under that hot tap and go at it with a, a scarring pad or you can use these little like, chain mail scrubbers or even a good stiff bristle brush and go at those areas where you find it's too thick um, heating it up and adding it under that hot water will create a lot of steam and you can hopefully get a lot of that off but if all goes well and you've got that third and final layer on the inside uh, that's the cast iron pretty much ready to cook there's not much more you need to do with it beforehand so when it comes to cooking with cast iron then you should always preheat your cast iron it takes quite a while for these things to heat up because they absorb so much heat but when they're up to temperature they hold their temperature really well so get them onto your barbecue early and uh, allow them to come up to temperature before you ever add any food into them you may also find if you're using a large piece of cast iron in your barbecue it can suck a lot of the ambient temperature out because it's all being absorbed into that cast iron so give it enough time that it's going to heat the cast iron up properly and allow your barbecue temperature to settle again as far as adding oil then during a cook um, try not to use too much oil in them they don't need it a lot of people are terrified of uh, stuff sticking to cast iron um, but it tends not to if you've got a good layer of seasoning in there it only needs a small amount of oil in the bottom of the pan and that's usually enough to stop anything sticking it's usually a good idea to cook something fatty in a skillet uh, for its first couple of cooks so the likes of bacon I like to I do a few rashers of bacon in there you get a bacon body at the end of it and it's uh, getting that bacon fat into the cast iron too so then once you've had your bacon body it now comes time to cleaning cast iron there's a few things you definitely shouldn't do I've already mentioned do not add soapy water to your cast iron um, it doesn't need it and it doesn't do your cast iron any good the other thing is that they're not dishwasher safe if you put this into a dishwasher the high heat of the dishwasher will strip all your seasonings off um, maybe not right down to the bare cast iron but they're going to do away with all that seasoning you've built up over time the way I like to clean it is if uh, the cast iron is cooled down and all the bits and pieces are inside it I'll heat it up slightly on the hob just to soften everything a little bit again and once again open up those pores of the cast iron then again with that screaming hot tap I'll take the cast iron over to the sink put it in use either the chain mail scraper if there's some bits burnt on there or I'll just use a stiff bristle brush if it's just maybe a layer of fat in there give it all a real good scrub down with that hot water and that is generally enough to clean it out uh, if you need to you can go in with a a scarring pad but try and use maybe one of the non-abrasive ones or uh, that isn't going to strip back your layers of seasoning if you still have a few real stubborn stains on there then go back to the heat and steam method so get the skillet screaming hot on the hob then with your tap 
uh, the steam bellowing out of it, place that screaming hot skillet under the really hot water and clouds of steam will come up but that steam will release anything that's really stuck or ground into that cast iron. So once your cast iron's clean then, uh, you can dry it off with a normal cloth, place it onto the hob and bring it up to temperature again just to make sure all the excess moisture is removed from it. And then to store it, you take it off the hob, allow it to cool slightly and add a small amount of oil just brushed around the inside of it. Every few times I'll do the outside and the handle as well, but I don't tend to do them every time. So a really small amount of oil brushed around so it's the slightest film and then just allow your cast iron to cool down. Once it's completely cooled, it should be smooth to the touch. It shouldn't be tacky. Um, if it is tacky, then again, you've added too much oil. So just the smallest amount, a few drops is enough just to rub around the inside of it. And that as the cast iron cools down, that'll draw that oil in and keep your seasoning good. Again, then you can use the conditioners if you don't want to use oil. Um, the conditioner, you just rub a small amount of it around the inside. Again, that's just an oily, waxy substance that will seep into the cast iron and keep it good. So as long as you've kept up with your seasoning, you can really store your cast iron anywhere. Uh, mine hang in the shack here because I know after each time I've cooked with them, I've cleaned them properly and I've reapplied that oil to keep the seasoning fresh. And that's all there really is to it. Just don't be scared of it. I didn't use cast iron for years because I was always worried about either ruining it or uh, not being able to cook in it and stuff sticking to it but since I've done a little bit of research into it uh, I know how to look after them now and I really enjoy cooking with them. So if you need any more advice I've left an article on the website that maybe goes into this in a little bit more detail or goes through each of those steps for the different processes again uh, or you can send me a message leave a comment below I'll reply to it or hit me up on Instagram or Twitter and I can talk you through if you're having particular issues with your cast iron. I'm by no means an expert, this is just stuff that out of sheer fear of ruining my cast iron I went and done the research on. Um, some people have different ways, they prefer different oils or they treat it a slightly different way but this seems to work for me so far so I thought I'd share it with you guys on the channel. So if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up, if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.